Welcome to the Empower Hour. I am your host, Al Kumar. <laughs> and I'm Hanifa. <laughs> and we're coming to you today with a special two-hour special on relationships. And as you can see, we have a full panel here with us today of just your regular ordinary everyday people sometimes you know we get into these panels and everybody is have their uh, phds and their professionalisms and all these letters and numbers behind their names but we figure we take an opportunity to come and bring the community members in on the discussion and share with us about um relationships what has worked for them what has not worked for them and uh, let's just have a heart to heart together as a community member. So, Hanifa, you wanted to mention? No, I did not. <laughs> okay. So, what I'll do is introduce real briefly um, who is on our panel today. We have um, six wonderful people here to join us: two elders, two middle aged, and two youth. So, we're getting a full spectrum today of um, you know of um, the topics. So, brother here, this is Kevin King. Kevin, can you share with us just, and you're the one of our middle aged panelists. Right. Just share briefly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is Kevin King. I'm from Washington, D.C., uh, newly practicing vegetarian. Okay. Do you yeah. mind sharing with us how old you are? Yeah, I am 45. Okay. And here's Miss Ashley Booker. Are Hello. You? Hi, my name is Ashley Booker. I'm 22 years old. I'm a mother of a two year old little boy, and I'm from California, Los Angeles. All right. All right. This is Baba Kwabana. Yes, Nana Kwabana Brown. I am definitely with an elderly's rail. I just turned 74. Oh. And, uh, and the happy father of four and the happy grandparent of seven. Mm -hmm. And have been involved with relationship workshops for quite some time. All right. Thank you. This is the lovely Madam Walker. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Madam Marcy Walker. I've been married for 46 years to the same man. <laughs> we have two sons and two grandsons. I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, after being married for a long time, I had a lot of stuff to talk about. Oh, wow. <laughs> so please, bring your questions. <laughs> and this here is one, another one of our youth panelists, Bryson. Yes, um, how you guys doing? Um, I'm a personal trainer, holistic health practitioner and been a vegan for about three years. Oh, been a vegan for about three years. And um, just sharing my, my little experiences as being a 27 year old, so. <laughs> All right. And to, to finalize and to wrap up our panel, this is Sister Wasita. Peace and blessings family on Wasita McKinley. I'm the founder of grassroots nonprofit Sisters United, as well as I'm the mother of a 24 year old daughter who have joined forces with me and we have started our new business, Bella B Beauty Inc. I mean, excuse me, LLC. All right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Great. Welcome, everyone, and thank you all for joining us. So we're just going to start out just with the basic question. Um, and anybody can answer what has been your experience? when it comes to dating or being married? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the things that I found um, after starting my business, Madam Walker's Bradery in school, was that my husband wasn't a part of that. And we usually do things together. Um, the business became very successful um, and he seemed to kind of be shrinking away. He started having some problems. Um, in that time, it's been 25 years, we started a school um, and a lot of different arms from the Self-Image Awards, even the Domestic Violence um, Advocates Program. I found that I had to involve him in what I did and let him know how important he is to me and what we were doing. Um, in doing that, he seemed to come out of that little cocoon he was in. <clears throat> A lot of women <clears throat> get so busy making money and becoming famous, they forget that they have a man. Wow. And that is wrong. Mm -hmm. 
that is wrong. If you want to keep your relationship, you have to show him that you need him. Oh, good point. Robert, would you, would you say, um, would you agree with her? Would you say that's, that's kind of the same way on the opposite end, that some women can feel like they're not involved in a relationship when a man becomes very um, busy? In his life affairs? Well, I can, uh, I can offer an opinion. I can't answer from a woman's perspective, of course. Yes, yes sir. But uh, one of the things that uh, the sister uh, spoke on that I, I'll just say that's a, a good buzzword um, is the marriage and there's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to understand that uh, the most important of those two is the relationship. You know, uh, and uh, just from a, a personal perspective, uh, marriage is a social, cultural, religious, spiritual, legal transaction. You can get married at the D.C. Superior Court. But the most important thing is the quality of the relationship, nurturing the relationship, keeping it alive, um, really, really considering it regardless of which the circumstances are, making more money, making less money, really, really focusing on the relationship is important and having the skills to really manage it. All right. Ashley, yes ma'am. Okay. I'm slightly nervous, so excuse me, but for me, in my experience, and just experience from friends as well, marriage in my generation is not something that you can ask for because nobody wants it. Even if the female is interested, it's not something that... Sorry, I'm so nervous. My heart is beating so fast. But it's not something that um, a lot of people want or a lot of people are interested in. It's more so you date. You date long enough to have sex, you have sex, and then you move and go your separate ways. And that's, I'm so nervous. But that's how it is kind of for my generation, what I've noticed. You know, it's not, no one wants to commit or no one wants to stay together long enough to actually be married. Or, you know, even if they have kids, they'll have multiple kids. Marriage is never in the picture, you know. So that's just what I've noticed. I'm kind of old school in how I grew up. So I always wanted to get married and have kids and things like that. And now it's like, you ain't getting married. <laughs> Nobody wants to marry. You know, it's rare. It's very rare. Mm. What, for, for, the, for the panel, what would you guys, because I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I, I sort of agree um, to a certain extent with when you meet people in their 20s or even a little bit younger, um, the discussion is not marriage as it, as it uh pertains to relationships. So for the panel, um, anyone can answer. What do you guys think? Um, why do you guys think that is? Has the older generation, the, do they have anything with, to do with that? Or is it just the cultural shifts that has happened? You guys can, anyone can answer. Um, I would like to answer on that. Um, I really feel like it's the, I really feel like it's the paradigm in which uh, a lot of my younger generation grew up in. Um, just the way that we're programmed nowadays, just uh, how we, just even how we communicate and how uh, we go about just having friendships, it's a lot of miscommunication and also um, it's a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of things that happens externally that goes on and that uh, feeds a lot of the youth false propaganda on how certain things should be as far as relationships and things of that nature. And it's a lot of dysfunctionality that goes on. Um, you can uh, go back in time and blame it on slavery and you know the mentality of how families was uh, torn apart um, through other. Uh, we just gonna say um, uh, we gonna say negative circumstances pertaining to uh, slave uh, slavery and um, just uh, certain things like the Stockholm syndrome and things of that nature. Even like uh, things similar to like the Willie Lynch letter. So I feel like it's a lot of things that uh, affects how um, that affects how people, especially my generation, um, kind of grew up and how we perceive uh, relationships to be because I feel like in my, um, I just feel like just from my experience, um, how we partake or how we feel like relationships should be is not really um, how it naturally is. And what I mean is when, we, when you get to start to understand uh, just getting to know someone, we don't really give enough time or even have enough patience to really get in tune with understanding a person in and out. It's like if they don't 
if we, if we if they don't meet up to our expectations, then it just gets to a point where we become impatient and everything comes redundant and we don't even put in the time or even put in the effort to, to really get to know them. Because I feel like if you're going to be in a relationship with someone, even if it's a friendship, it takes time, it takes uh, healing, it takes uh, nurturing and understanding, you know, what it is, you know, to get there. So. Yeah. But, Cedar, what's been your experience? Um, yes, I think um, two things have really... Uh, probably affected our youth to feel the way they feel today. Uh, the first thing I believe is the media. There's so much power in the media and the media projects so much negativity. Uh, they glamorize being a side chick. Uh, a lot of the shows they want to just have a single mom or even shows now you see they don't have a black strong male figure in there. They'll pair the black women with another race. So I think the media plays a very uh, prominent part in a negative way in causing our youth to feel that marriage is not necessary. Also, I'm 53 years old and I take responsibility in saying that I believe that our generation have failed the youth. We have not shown them adequately how to truly love another person in a relationship form. Uh, when you see mothers that may, this is not to discriminate or to criticize anybody, but we're just talking real. But when you see mothers that have multiple children by multiple men, or you see fathers and the kids know that Papa is a rolling stone, have multiple women. So what are we at our generation, like I said, I'm 53, what have we shown the younger, younger generation what it means to truly be in love and respect the other person? Yeah, I think that uh, it's always been um, a lag with uh, like men wanting to, wanting to get married uh, early. So I think it's always been like that in every generation. But why? And I think, well, let me say this, and I, I, I try to expound on why. But I think with the younger generation, that I know for a fact that uh, women have become, uh, you know, to lack of a lack of a better term, looser. Because I know some of my little like nephews and stuff like that, they'll come to me. And, and the stuff that I would probably ask a woman when I was 17 or 18 to do, the women are now asking the, the boys, and even younger. And I'm like, shocked. But uh, so I think that has a lot to do with it. You know, and men, men are always lag in maturity. You know what I mean? So if a woman is 22, you know, the man, uh, he, he's not really, most men are not really trying to get married uh, that young. What was the question? Why? Why are men lagging? Yeah. Well, men men just have a problem with commitment and um, and the socialization. When you come up, uh, I know when I came up, uh, it, it was not necessarily the cool thing to do is to be in a relationship with a woman, or to even admit that you that you love her or that you like her. You know, in a sense, it was macho stuff. But it was just the, the group that I came up. It was like that was. Uh, Men still did it. I mean, boys did it, but it wasn't something that was uh, um, that the community necessarily supported. Young men don't didn't necessarily support that. You know, you being in a relationship with a, with a woman at that age. So what I'm hearing, I mean, and just listening to that, um, it sounds like what that individual is exposed to at a very early age really matters. It really yes. determines how they are going to approach relationships because that 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 could be could have been your reality and your experience. And yes. then you may have someone who came up in a home or a family where the men that's not what they did. They committed and they showed that example and so that's what they know. So when they get, you know, to a, to an age where they're open to be married or it could be in their twenties where yeah. they're looking for that because that's all they know. That's all they've been exposed to. So it definitely sounds like exposure from very early on oh, matters yeah. tremendously. Yeah. I'm wondering if the culture, the overall culture in this society um, um, adds to the lack of commitment going on right now yeah. But yeah. with men and women. Okay. I think it really absolutely does, Alkamar. Um, the things that we see in our life are instant. I see relationships, people that are getting married, people that say they're committed, they're living together, and they're building financially, spiritually, and, that, and then something goes wrong. The doo-doo hits the fan. And all of a sudden, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. 
because you jump out of one and jump into another and it's okay. They think, a lot of people think it's okay. If somebody did, if they smacked you in the face, time to run, time to run. Sometimes it's worth sticking to it to learn what is causing this in somebody that I love, that I believe loves me. I'm not saying you should be beaten because you know how I am about domestic violence, okay? I'm saying that sometimes you have to forgive. You need to learn how to forgive. That is one of the most important things I believe in a relationship because things are going to happen constantly. If there's no drama, you're not alive. You're going to have challenges in your life, in your relationships, whatever they are, men to men, women to women, men and women. You're going to have challenges. And if you succumb to every challenge, you know what you're going to be? A old lady with a cat. <laughs> you're not going to have a relationship with a man because as soon as he falls down on the job, you're going to like hit the bricks. I'm not putting up with it because we feel like we have to be the strong black woman and not be vulnerable to anything. And we have to be vulnerable because that man has been pushed down by everybody. He has been kicked since we came to this country. And if we as black women don't surround our men with strength and say, I got your back, baby. I got your back. You got fired? Guess what? We're going on a picnic today and you're looking for a job tomorrow. Yeah, I just want to comment. Yes. Uh, I'm just reflecting back. Um, you know, one of those people who was born in the 40s and raised in the 50s. And it's, uh, one of the things that's part of the, of the issues is the real breakdown in culture and community. I, I can remember, I grew up in, I grew up in, in New York and many people think that uh, segregation was in the South. That's because you didn't grow up in the North. <laughs> we had Italian neighborhoods, Jewish neighborhoods, and we had black neighborhoods. And those lines were very, very definite. You do, if you crossed those lines, you ran into a problem. But the black community was very, very strong. On our block, we had doctors, lawyers, policemen. We had everything that was contained. And we had a sense of culture and expectations and morality that was very much in place. As a matter of fact, we partied. But on, on Sunday, we were in church somewhere. And those kinds of things have sort of kind of fallen apart. You know, integration, and I don't mean any harm to anybody, it's one of the worst things that ever happened to us. Because uh, when we had the doctors and the lawyers and the policemen living on one block, we had so many role models of families and how you conduct your behavior, marriage, etc. And we've gotten away from that. We need to really, as a people, we need to go back to when were we doing well. Now, I make a joke all the time about uh, when we were colored, we had so much. You know, when we became Negro, Black, and African, and African American, stuff like that, somehow we got away from those values that our grandparents had, and which my which my my, my parents would be your great, almost your great grandparents. Uh, and we need to go back and see what did we have that really held our community together. When we had a, a cultural awareness about how we conduct ourselves as a people, and how we conduct ourselves as husbands and wives and fathers and brothers and what have you. We need to go back to that because right now we're just aimlessly moving out here in space. Now, now it's uh, it's uh, you know what you want. I don't know what you want to call it, but we're out here in computer space, and we really have gotten away from some of those values which are very important. We need to get back to them. I agree, and this and what I'd like to know more from the youth is their experience as to um, the end results of getting away from what you just said, Baba. So, based on what you see, Ashley, out here, um, what has been what has been the most challenging thing for you and your peers to be able to stick it out? Why do you think that so many relationships from the youth aren't long lasting, don't last a long time? What are you seeing as the, the reason for that? And, and um, Bryce, yeah, Bryson, Bryson. If, you could, if you have an answer to. It could honestly be a lot of reasons. Um, my the reason I would say is mainly because there's so many people out there. Why stick with someone if it's not working? Why force it if it's 
if it's just not something that you're happy with or there's too many problems or you can't communicate okay or you know okay he doesn't he doesn't treat me like I want him to or he's complaining too much let me just find somebody else I think that make maybe why our you know generation is just so quick and easy to just move on to the next person versus just working it out and it also could be you know temptation from other people from you know what we see out there it's like all right well I, ha I might have a good girl she could be doing everything I want but she's way prettier she has way bigger of a butt I'm gonna go talk to her or you know her hair is longer I'm gonna go talk to her or oh he has a nicer car I'm gonna talk to the one with the Mercedes you know it could be that too so I'm not exactly sure Bryson, you have a, yeah, I see you laughing. You got that, that butt comment got you no, because it's, <laughs> tickled. It's, it's very interesting because, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of young males my age, that's what all they focus on anyway. And I feel like you can never really get nowhere with anyone focusing on just, like, how they look. You know, it's about internally and what the person brings to you, you know, what they bring to the table. How could you help that person and how that person can help you? It's like both parties come into an agreement and you know I feel like what we don't do as a youth today we don't sit down and say okay how can what can I do better or what how can I uh, help you get to closer to your goals and what you need to do in life or vice versa like we don't have these conversations um a lot of times it just comes off of you know what makes me feel good and we do this just because just because we don't do things based on a purpose or based upon our future and I feel like Going back to what I said a little earlier, I really feel like it just it, it, it just how the programming is and how like the mindset of um, guys or young men my age like it just it takes it really takes even when they come across a good woman or come across somebody that's great for them like it, it's still something that's never enough and it's more so of a it, it's it's an unsatisfaction with the, with with their self really mm -hmm. that's what it is it, it's self like they don't know how to love themselves they don't know how to appreciate themselves so you're finding different parts of women that find or that you see that's um part of yourself with and they might go with more than one woman and i feel like if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody you should at least express what's really going on with you internally though they can Actually, you wanted to say something i saw you jump up when yes. you said something. what he's saying is very true in a way like uh, our people are very, very selfish. And it could be because of this age in your 20s, they say this is the age you're supposed to be selfish. You're supposed to focus on yourself. But in a way, it's like, we're so selfish, it's almost like, what do you do for me? If you don't do anything to benefit me, if you don't do anything to you know, change my life, then I don't want nothing to do with, do, do with it. But it's also like, what are you doing for them? You know, like, how are you helping them? How are you making that relationship better? Why are you just trying to take, take, take versus bringing something to the table as well? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say, like, it's true. We we are um, our generation, and I think in the 20s age is where a lot of people are selfish, and so it's hard to be in a really good relationship when you're a selfish person. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was listening to Bryson, and I completely agree, actually. Um, I was listening to Bryson, and... I had an experience on the way here that frustrated me. I um, almost hit the back of someone's truck who was butt watching, and he was willing okay. to jeopardize his life and the rest of all of our lives just to make sure he get a good view of this lady's behind. And I, in my car, I'm fussing out loud, and I'm like, where's the self-discipline to where even if you just glimpse, you keep moving. The fact that you're driving and you, your head is going one way and your truck is going the next is disgusting to me. I'm like, where is the discipline? But when you just talked about um, self-love, I personally feel a lot of that is missing because I feel that what's happening now is that we are being programmed uh, to search for happiness, for love, for completion, everything outside of ourselves. And so therefore, when we meet each other, we're coming to the table with, okay, so what you got for me? Mm -hmm. Instead of what can we both give, build, I mean, give to each other, to build each other up. So you're coming and say, what can you, and that's why it's so easy, easy for us to walk away now because it's like you're not filling my tank, the tank that you should be filling yourself. Right. Because you're not filling that tank, that's, that way I'm just going to, you know, get rid of you. You know, I'm just going to discard you. So I definitely see a lot of that. Now, that's the younger generation. I definitely want to hear from the older um, people, middle age and older, that may be dating, 
at that age in your 40s, what does that look like? Yeah. Is it the same I, thing? I'm, I'm so glad that you, <laughs> that you wrote that up because I was just like burning inside <laughs> to say, I was your age once. Mm-hmm. I really was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 68 now. And I'm from New York. Right. Um, the Lower East Side where there was the melting pot. There were all kinds of people in our neighborhood. We learned to eat Jewish uh, people's foods and Polish people's food. And I only say that because no people were off the table in terms of relationships. Mm-hmm. We had kind of a blinder on. We went to school with ethnicities of every kind and they slept in our house and we slept in their house. That being said, when I was old enough to start dating, mm-hmm. I wasn't exclusive to anyone. I know who I was attracted to. I was attracted to brown skinned people. I was not attracted to Caucasians just to look at them and feel them. They were friends, but that was it. Then I want to say that the way I grew up in a poor household where my father said we were rich, I didn't know we were poor. So I had a self-esteem that was bigger than me. And I could go anywhere and talk to anyone. So I don't think you're selfish. I think somebody has fed something into your spirit that makes you think that, Uh uh-uh, you are the greatest Ashley that God put on the earth. And once you believe that, doesn't matter if you have gold earrings or bone earrings, okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter if your behind is a bahunkus or a pancake. I'm beautiful in the skin that I'm in. If we can somehow, Ashley, this whole panel, we've got to convey that not only to the outside, but to our inside. Because it's like you said, sister, we think things make us. We looking at a man and he got a fancy car. We don't know he don't have a dollar in the bank. (laughs) He has nothing in his pocket and he has nothing here. Why do you want him? Because you think he got a fancy car. We have to get away from the things, the way things look, and then look at the way things are and know what you want. I want somebody who loves God I want somebody that loves himself. And this is the thing. This is the clue, ladies, I'm going to share with you. (laughs) My grandmother told me the secret. She said, if the man treats his mother like a queen, hold on to him. Because he's going to treat you that way. Sister Wasita, thank you for that. Thank you. the, uh, The irony of all of this is, The same thing the younger folks are dealing with, the older folks are dealing with the exact same issues. If nobody has told you that, I'm telling you that today. I'm 53. I date in the age range from 55 to 65. And they still are doing the exact same things that Brother Bryson's generation is doing. No way. Yes, yes, let me tell you. And I even work with seniors all day. I run a program 60 and older, and gentlemen between the ages of 60 and 85, I see daily with the same mindset as our 20-year-old generations. So don't think that you are alone and think you're the only one selfish. It goes from your age to the grave. Okay, let me put that out there. And also, sister, I hear what you're saying about far as if a man treat his mom like a queen. Well, sister, let me tell you, that is true to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But in this 21st century, Mm -hmm. he can treat his mom like a queen, but he still would treat the woman in the street like something else. That no longer is 100% Proof, right? Um, excuse me. Proof, right? I don't right think there. it ever was. Yeah, but <laughs> but but that's a little that's a little thing you can hold on to. Yeah. Well, we're gonna <laughs> okay. we're gonna try to keep hope alive. Yeah. Let me put it like that. We're gonna <laughs> we try, to, you know, <laughs> because the reality is, the, and I I experienced this myself 
personally. I dated a guy who mother condoned. He allowed other women to come to her home mm -hmm. knowing that I was supposed to be the main one. And I'm sure I might not be the only one who have experienced that before. But mothers out here now condoning the nonsense that's projected on our young folks. Uh, uh, and once again, I go back to the media. I go back to who we idolize. People are looking at this movie star life, the NFL, the sports, and that right there, we already know they are slaves to the system, and I'm unapologetic in saying that. So you are now analyzing something that's already a slave to the system, so you see this mess that they're doing, and you got women killing themselves, getting Botox, pumping their butt up, weave to California, eyelashes down the street, all to fit an image that is not the true African Asiatic woman. So, and then you fighting each other over a man that is a slave to a system. See, it, it, it's nothing but a, 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 a modern day conspiracy that still exists today. Mm -hmm. And it, it's confusing us. And, 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 and until you know who thyself is and have a connection to the creator, you're gonna be bamboozled on a daily basis. And that's what's happening. Yeah, I Baba, wanna... sorry, Baba has something to say. I'm sorry. Okay, no, you go, Baba. Yeah. No, no, you good. Okay. I, 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 All right, uh, two things, and in, in, in just reflecting on what's being said so far, and uh, what's what's needed that we had in the old days when we were colored. We had value systems. Mm -hmm. yeah, we may have done some bad things, but we knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was not condoned by society and the neighborhood and the culture. Or the community. And, and one of the things I would say is that it's really important because we have had teachers. Uh, for this young lady and for the young man that's here, um, within your community here in Washington, D.C., you all had one of the greatest minds there was, is Francis Cress Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, we had one of the greatest minds in, in, in America, uh, the Honorable Dr. Maialana Karinga. You have the founder of, of uh, this particular uh, organization, Hebrew Israelites. There are, there are people who are, who are presented to us that are here who are teaching value systems that we must address and we must uh, appraise ourselves to. At least investigate them. Without a value system, what do you have? You have wh whatever. But at least with a value system, you have something that can guide your life by. Mm -hmm. yes. Very, very important. So uh, I'm suggesting the brilliant young minds that are here, and I just want to uh, really, really applaud you all. Uh, for what you bring and how you bring it, mm -hmm. that use that use that brilliant mind to investigate um, uh, contemporary teachers, keep the teachers within your time, and, and and investigate value systems which make the difference. Because with a value system, um, and, and this is something that I say why elders are important. Yes, young people can ask can say what it is that they're doing, but elders can say why something is happening. And that's why it's very important. And so it's very important for elders to develop them and they have to make sure that they have a value system that they go by. It could be the Ten Commandments, it could be the Quran, it could be the Torah, it could be anything. But you have to have a value system. Without a value system, you're just wandering out there. Now, in terms of, uh, of the, the gentlemen that you see in the 60s and 50s and 70s, they are my contemporaries. And yeah, I know very well what they're doing. Uh, I, I'm amazed about what they're doing. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm amazed. But you know what, what I, I realized with this? I do a lot of men's development workshops. I've been mm -hmm. doing that now for almost 30 some odd years. And the thing that has really come to me, that has really blown my mind, is that a lot of men have what we call developmental delays. Yes. All right? And I'll give you a little joke <laughs> to go along with it. I live out in the Southeast. So if ever your TV doesn't break, come out in the Southeast. We have, we have live entertainment out there 24 hours a day. And uh, this guy got on the bus one day, on a, on a, on a bus, and the, the lady says to him, sir, such and such and such. He had his hat on backwards, right? Mm -hmm. He says, sir, sir, I ain't no man. I'm a supersized kid. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, I can't tell you what I said, but I said, wow, this is deep. Because it, <laughs> it really does show you uh, the, the mindset, yes, sir. the development of the ladies that there are within a lot of men. Uh, 50, 60 years old, chronologically, but in terms of mentally and emotionally, you're looking at people who were never socialized, who were never properly socialized by men who were properly socialized, mm -hmm. who could show them how to be men. Mm, that's and, true. and so there's a, a lot of things that need to be done. Well, we need to go back and find a value system. Very, very important. Whether somebody else agrees with our value system, that doesn't make any difference. You, right. you have a value system that you live your life by. Mm -hmm. And for the men, 
you know, I'll give you my number. I'm going to start my men's workshops again. Come to my men's workshop. Go to the Nation of Islam. Go somewhere where they show you how to be uh, appropriate behavior for your chronologic age. So you're not just suffering what we call development delays. Yeah. You know, and that's 50 if you're a super-sized kid, right. which you had on backwards in your, in, your, in your pants below your butt. I mean, I've seen it and I just cannot Ooh. believe it. You know, but what is that? That's development delays. So there's some things, otherwise, we can, we can talk about it, but you need to also take a look at some of the things that can really uh, turn things around. Right. Well, wow. This is this is great. If you guys are just joining in online, this is the Empower Hour. We do this every Wednesday, normally from two to three p.m. This is a two-hour special on relationships, building healthy relationships in our community. If you are online and you have a question, shoot it out. We do have people in the background that um, can ask the panelists your questions. So don't be shy. Um, I actually had a question at. Brother, let me ask you though, did, did you want to add to anything that was yeah, already Yeah, the only said? thing I was going to say, uh, I forgot who brought it up, but uh, I heard Will Smith say uh, one time that he was talking about with him and his wife, and he said he told her that it was her responsibility for her to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and it, it was profound, I had to keep thinking about it, but you know, because a lot of men may think, you know, I got to make my woman happy, or you may think I got to make my husband happy, but... Mm -hmm. You, you got to, your first responsibility is for you to be happy. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a happy person, then you can come to that, to that, to that other person. But, but, but don't put it on the other person. Don't, don't, don't drag, you know, don't say, you know, I'm, I'm not happy because this person is not making me happy. Mm -hmm. and, you, uh, should be, yeah. you should be coming to, I agree, oh. you should be coming to the table so full that you're coming to the table saying, hey, I am so full and I have enough to share. Not I'm so empty and I need you to fill me. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot that's a burden that no one should have to carry. Yeah. No one should have to carry that. The responsibility to make another individual exactly. happy is a heavy burden for mm -hmm. anyone to carry. Right. And this is why in relationships we're burning out. Yes. Because you really should not have to carry that burden. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right, 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 right. And, and that and that is so true. And also, I want to share this. And I, I, we have to define what dating is. My definition of dating is seeing someone, enjoying their company, and learning about them. That means that you can date whomever, whenever, whatever you want, until two people mutually agree that they want to become exclusive. And, and, and decide to build together, a date is just a date. And in my opinion, I'm sharing my experience, I date multiple people without sex. Dating, period, should not involve sex. Dating is the process of learning one another. And until you sit down face to face and mutually agree that you two want to take it to another level, a date is simply just a date. And be honest when you're dating. The gentlemen I date, they all know I date multiple people. And until I sit down with one of them and we both agree to go to another level, then I dismiss the rest. But a dating, a date is simply a date. Enjoy yourself. You're young. Date without sex. Get the knowledge and take it from there. Wow. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's a it, it, that's a theory because most men date uh, to to consummate. Mm -hmm. Okay, most men are dating. They're, they're not dating. I mean, to me, I mean, if you think about it, right? When do relationships really start? Right. Because what I've always thought is that when I meet a woman. The tension is so high in the beginning, you know, as far as um, um, wanting to consummate the situation, that you may not be the person that you are until it's. And then once the consummation, once that, once the sex act happens, um, you know, it, then you you become who you are, and it's like you know you don't have that necessarily had that tension, but. If I met a woman and she told me that she's dating multiple guys, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, okay, if she's dating multiple guys, I mean, she, she's distracted. 
So I'm not gonna put no time in that woman. I wait till she wait, wait till, if if I'm around when she finishes with multiple guys, and if I'm still around and still interested, then I go there. But I'm not dating no woman to tell me she's dating multiple guys. Like that's to me that's wasted time and, and, and energy. So uh, brother, what you think is wasted I was, time uh, for you to date someone, take them out one time, and then put all of your energy in having sex with them? Do I think say it again? That if you right. dating a woman, like you say, you put all of that energy. I said all the energy is there. Yeah, yeah, right. all the energy and the excitement. And the goal is consummation. Yeah, yeah, it goes into consummating a sexual act. Right. Not the energy going into finding out who this is. Right. So whether she dates multiple men or not, right. it all ends up the same way that you're talking about. So let me just see if I could put this in your head for a minute. Okay. You meet a woman. Right. She's exciting. Right. She's smart. Right. She got Practice. all the stuff. Right. And so you like, I got to hit that. I got to hit that. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> no. Right. But she doesn't say like, no. Right. She's still engaging. Right. She's still talking to you. You're still finding out about each other and this goes on for as long as you can stand it right, right. I, 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 I've been talking to you for two weeks I can't do it we gonna go to bed or we not gonna go to bed you end up losing because the consummation of the sex act should be the height of you getting to know somebody who is this? This is somebody I want to hold on to. And that's the only way you're going to know. That's why people are not getting married. I don't want anybody else to go to bed with you. I want to be the only one with you. Mm -hmm. And to make that happen, I'm going to commit and we're going to get married. But the, the reality of it is, is that, I mean, I'm not dealing with a virgin. Right? Even so. No, no, let me finish. Mm -hmm. though. I'm not dealing with a virgin, right? Uh -huh. So if she ain't no virgin... And it's a situation where I'm dating and we got good energy, right? But it's uh but but for some reason it's not going to where it's supposed to go. Uh to me it seems like it's a natural course. Because I don't I think a part of getting to know a woman is experiencing her sexual. Mm -hmm. Like that's profound. Like 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 you can't know a woman better than that. It, like like if you take a woman that has a friend, right? She has two friends. One guy she slept with, she's, she's been intimate with, right? And she's still friends with him. Mm -hmm. This other guy she's never been intimate with. She's closer to him, to the other guy that she's been intimate with than she is. Okay. I right. totally disagree I, with that. Wait, let's see. Let's see that I have something I like to do with this. Let's see that you. So you're closer first, to the guy that you didn't first, that you didn't have sex first, with? First, let me just say this. Let me just say this. This is very important for all women to understand. Our temple is priceless. And I'm going to hold on to that priceless temple. I'm not just giving that away. Because the reality is, brother, you keep saying the reality is. Mm -hmm. The reality is this. Most men, when they hit it, 90% of the time, they gone. Oh, so true. I have true. given up, right. I have right. given up right. my temple for you to satisfy this temporary energy. Right. And then you leave me hanging? Not. So okay, people, wait. How I, many people been in the temple? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Why are you when counting? I that temple, when I hold hold now, hold when I go in that temple, I see all these footprints. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, it's not a. I want another temple. That's an ass <laughs> that's an assumption. Okay, okay, wait, wait. I have a question. That's an assumption. I have a question because the way the conversation is flowing, <laughs> what I'm realizing is that we. This is I, personally from my observation, and you guys can definitely speak to this if if you whether you agree or disagree. It sounds like. We often come into these situations already prejudging, already thinking we know, because we have these generalizations. We're hearing a lot of, this is what men do, this is what women do. And could that possibly be a part of the issue? Because every individual is different. Yes, I fit the general gender. I am a woman or I am a man, but you do not know me specifically. One size does not fit all. And this is the dating process that we're talking about. 
this is why you did because every person is not the same mm -hmm. so could there be maybe part of the issues that we're coming in already thinking we already know because we've had these experiences with people of the same gender could that possibly be a it, part it, of it it could be possible what you're saying is true and it also could be learning from your mistakes right mm -hmm. okay Okay. And, and that's why you have to use wisdom, right? Because, I mean, I've lost some good women that I've listened to my friends, right? They probably wanted the woman, right? But I listened to them. They gave me, now she, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I cut it. And then, like, five years later, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I realized I mistook her. So, so you're right. You've got to use, you can't just, it's not a cookie cutter thing, right? right? You can't just treat every woman, you know, you got to, each individual woman is different. Mm hmm so you you know so I agree with that I agree with that I agree oh, sorry one more thing I agree with Sita you do have to use discernment I mean you do have to um, take your mistakes and learn from them but that goes both ways we as women and men we have to take our experiences and learn from them in the sense of where where in this situation did I need to grow and actually grow or where in this situation what things that happen do I need to look out for in the future but I also think that when we come into relationships we have to use discernment is this my own experiences and hurt rising up and it's black is blinding me from actually you know allowing this allowing myself to really get to know this person or is this this alert that's going on to me is it legit is this per, is it that this person really can't be trusted and as a woman i have to say that we have to use discernment we have to again be in tune with ourselves to where is, is it my own experience and my own hurt that's speaking or is this legit is this person someone that i really can't trust so definitely discernment is necessary but oh Baba, i was coming to you so i'm glad you have your hand up so i'm gonna let you go ahead and make your statement <laughs> you get the mic okay yeah well from someone who's been around for a while and has done a lot of things right, a lot of things that not right, I will say that uh, having sex too early shuts your brain down. Mm -hmm. Sex is a very powerful thing. It completely, no offense meant to anybody, it shuts your brain down. Mm -hmm. Your brain stops working. Mm -hmm. And uh, both men and women, Baba. Oh, well, women are smarter. You always think it <laughs> while you all have the sex. We don't think while we have the sex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. our, our, our brains, our brains shut down. Okay. Our brains shut down, and, uh, the, and the thing is that that's what I'm trying to say. Value system again is very, very important. You know, how do we see each other? We see each other as something from whom, from which. And this on your point earlier, mm -hmm. that we're supposed to extract something. Do we see ourselves as something that we're supposed to give something to someone? Mm -hmm. And do we realize the importance of relationships? Relationships are the life support system that are essential for human beings. How we don't put time into them. We don't get a chance to really know somebody. We don't really develop a relationship. We don't get a chance to know them. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really important. And this should be a time, I mean, just taking our memory running for a while. In 1950s, if we held hands, right, that was a, that was, that was a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, we used to have our little rites of passage dances called the grind. Right, <laughs> and uh, what we would do is we would go, we'd have little parties in the basement. The girls would get out their fingernail polish. We'd color up the the light bulbs would be dark down there, and and that really for eighty five ninety percent of it, that was as far as we went. A kiss and a grind, and holding hands, and we were really aware that there's a line that you did not cross. Back then, you know, the the main thing about that back then is that people got pregnant, but we really need to take a look at at, at some of the boundaries. I mean, there. There really is no dating. People don't bring their girlfriend home. People don't bring their boyfriend home. They do not. There's none of the stuff that we used to have, quote unquote, in the old days, where you actually got to know somebody. You actually got to know somebody, and you took time to know them. And uh, full coitus, sexual intercourse, was something that came way, way down the line. Way, way down the line, you know. And so there's no steps now. I've, I've got a son that's 24. So I hear vicariously what's going on when they say we're hanging out. Well, I know what that means now. <laughs> what y'all doing? We're hanging out. You know? And so it's really important for those of us who've been around for a while to impose some values. Whether our young people want to hear the value or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. We need to impose some values. Yes. When my daughters were coming up, my daughters are now all in their 30s and 40s. They had to bring the Negro home. They had to bring them home. I, I, I want to see who this is that you're going out with. 
Your young man, what's your name? Where you from? Blah, 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 blah. You know? And so parents got to reinstitute some kind of values. And the young people got to understand, look, there's certain kinds of limits. You don't go from zero to 10. You'll never get to know that person. The person will never get to know you. You cannot have a relationship with somebody who you do not know who does not know you. And I was going to say from my own experiences, homo sapiens sapiens, male, that sex shuts your brain down. And you really have to get to have developed a relationship with somebody before you start. Once you start doing that, you know, it's like a drug. Sex is a drug. It's addictive. If you think it's that addictive, then why do you go back and do it over and over and over again? And right? the danger associated with it is so great mm -hmm. that, you know, could take your life from you. If you're having unprotected sex, you know, there, there's a chance that you could get something really, really horrible that you can't get rid of. Um, baby is the least all of uh, uh, the least um, worrisome thing uh, with so much going on. I, I just want to say that times have changed. I'm with you. I understand what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it's very different. We, we had to bring boyfriends home and, and all that. My father had to check them out. The guys were scared to death, the whole thing. And um, we, we waited to have sex with someone. Um, no, you're not taking to me to McDonald's and thinking that I owe you something because you took me out. <laughs> no. Um, there had to be some time invested in me. It's like you said, you know, we're sitting on a gold mine. We're sitting on something that is the flower of your, yourself. And to just give it away, just give it away, give it away. It doesn't mean anything to you. And it certainly doesn't mean anything to a man who suspects that or knows that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, we're midway into our program, and I'm going to go into our promos. But I do want to come back with the point of you mentioned your father. You had, they had to come home to your father. And I want to discuss a little bit about that, the importance of having um, a father in the home. But, um, but for now, we're going to talk about where we are. This is Everlasting Life, located at 9185 Central Avenue in Capitol Heights, Maryland. And the panel, if you guys wanted to jump up, you know, feel free. Um, again, Hanif and I do this, the Empower Hour, every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. in the eLife Studios. We're usually inside of the studios. You can catch us online under Empower Hour Talk Show. Or you can catch any of our previous episodes on uh, YouTube under Miss Free to People. Thursday nights, children eat free right here at Everlasting Life um, from 6 to 8 p.m. Any child 12 and under that is accompanied by a paying adult, they do eat free. Not only do they eat free, but they come and they enjoy they s themselves um, and have a blast here. It becomes a big playroom right here. So bring the children in the community. They get a great, wholesome, healthy meal. And that goes on again every Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Following that up, each and every Friday is our dinner and a movie night. If you see this uh, screen right here behind me, this becomes a, a, a movie. So we take the banner down and we air different movies or documentaries um, each and every Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. And then we follow that up with a discussion. So we talk about what we have seen. So come on out, join us for that. That's our dinner and a movie. That's also free. Every third Saturday of the month is our marketplace. You can come to get fresh vegan groceries. You can get healthy um, items for the skin and hair. You can come sometimes and Dr. Baruch will lead up some discussions to talk to you about some of the health um, things that go on in our community. That's each and every Thursday from 11 to 4 p.m. I'm sorry, <laughs> the third Saturday. I'm not trying to do this from, from the top of my head. I don't have anything in front of me. The third Saturday of every month. That's taking place from 11 to 4 p.m. First Saturdays. I head up, which is the Black Wall Street Renaissance, um, each and every first Saturday of the month. We take the lounge area. 
We place vendors here, so you can come shop, shop, shop till you drop. And not only that, we open the stage to different lecturers, entertainers, sometimes we have food demonstrations, and it's always free. And that's an all-day event that goes on from 12 to 6 p.m. That's called the Black Wall Street Renaissance. This Saturday, we'll be um, headlining uh, Cicely. She's a local singer-songwriter, songstress. If you've never heard her voice, you definitely are in for a treat. You want to come and witness this beautiful songbird. She really does an excellent job um, singing and writing her own music. So come and support Cicely. Again, that's at the Black Wall Street Renaissance. She takes the stage at 3.30 this Saturday. And uh, again, Everlasting Life is one of three locations. The other two are both located in your Tacoma Park section of Washington, D.C. That is Vigorito's uh, Burrito Bar, as well as ooh, Evolve. <laughs> you know this by now. Evolve Restaurant and Lounge. So um, same great tasting food, three different locations. And lastly, if you are interested in what Hanif and I do here and you think you have a voice that should be heard um, to a wider audience, definitely consider coming and joining us as a host at, on, in the studios under eLife Studios. We are looking for hosts as well as engineers um, behind the camera or in front of the camera. So if you have experience or you have no experience, and you're looking to join us here at the eLife Studios family, we would love to have you. So, family members online, if you have questions for any of our panelists, feel free to shoot them out. They are here to answer any of your questions. Um, yeah, so we could, this is a live, this, um, lively discussion. We do bring the family in on the discussion. Okay, we're gonna get started back up as soon as everybody gets comfortable. We're waiting on the barber to come. So he, um, honey, do you want to share? Um, no, not right now. But we do have some questions coming in from our live audience. So once we resume, I will definitely be asking. But we really just have one question for one person on the panel. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and let me get we just did. So we're waiting on the bottle to come back. Is that better? You have such a sweet spirit. Yes. Um, uh, that's what she was just saying. She could tell I, I was yeah. so nervous. 